Hey, welcome back and thanks for joining me for another episode of the uh, Spinner Model Build. Last video we covered getting the um, whole underside of the spinner done, doing all the police lights you see here. Then uh, we moved on to doing the door lights, uh, worked on the center console lighting, worked on the dash computer monitor lighting. And now it's time to just start getting everything installed in the interior. So my plan was to use this side emitting fiber to create these neon glow pieces um, on the center portion here and also around the uh, dash monitor. And I was just going to use this side emitting fiber. But upon trying to bend it, and I did use heat, um, it just doesn't work well. The corners light up really bright and then it dims it and it's really hard to see it and it's just not working the way I wanted it to so I'm gonna have to come up with a different plan so what I decided to do is I sanded this all down and I'm gonna cut down the middle of this and use some clear styrene in there so I've cut out an area here where I want to put that neon glow in and then I've gone and I've repainted the whole thing blue again and I've cut out a piece of clear styrene here to the shape that I want to fit inside that little notch that I had cut out of that center monitor portion. Then what I did is I went and I sanded it down with 800 grit sandpaper to diffuse the piece itself. And then you can see the piece just slips right inside the little notch that I cut out and rests right inside there. Um, then give it a little light for a test and you can see how the light comes through there nice and even. So then what I did is I gave it a shot of some Tamiya clear blue paint so that it would be blue. And then again, just take the piece and we're just gonna drop it into the little slot that I cut out here. And then I glued it in place using micro crystal clear. Uh, down there you can kind of see it looks like white glue at the moment. But I'm using that to hold it in place. And then again, another little light test, and it lights up nice and blue. So now we've got the center computer monitor here. Um, I had sanded it down last time. Oh, and I also went and I did touch up these handles on the front of it and made it look a little bit cleaner now. But what I'm going to do now, since I'm not using the uh, side emitting fiber optic, is I'm going to do the same I did with that center monitor part. I'm going to cut some notches out of this and use clear styrene. So to start with I'm just going to use a ruler here and I'm just going to score this monitor portion in the back and yes this all should have been done before painting and putting on the front monitor but it is where I am now since it's not working out as planned but I'm just going to continue and do a second score here for where the other yellow neon stripe is going to go. And I got both lines scored there as you can see. So I'm just going to take those and continue cutting. And I've gone and I've cut out and I've got the front, middle, and rear pieces here. And then I've spray painted them blue again just to touch them up so there's no white. And just like with the center monitor I cleared out some clear styrene here. Um, I used 0.75, that's all I had on hand. I actually wish I would have had 0.5 millimeter. It would have been slightly smaller, but this will work. It's just a little larger than I would have liked. But this piece I cut to fit this rear portion. Uh, you can see how it extends up beyond the frame of the rear portion just a tad enough that it'll glow. So like the other, I sanded this down with 800 grit sandpaper. And then I'm just going to give it a shot of uh, Tamiya clear yellow paint to make it glow neon yellow. And I've done that to both of my pieces, one slightly larger because the monitor is at an angle. And then I went ahead and I glued each piece into position using the crystal clear so that it dries clear but it holds it in place pretty well. And now I just need to put this center piece in between the two of them. So I've glued it to the front portion you can see here and then I'm just going to go ahead and apply some more crystal clear around the inner edge here and apply the back portion and just stick that on into place and hold it 
and then it'll dry into position. And there we've got it. So I've installed a little warm 0402 SMD LED here and this is a hole for the light that comes from the monitor itself. And this way when I pull the monitor on that warm LED will light up the yellow neon stripes and the other light that's already installed in the monitor will light up the monitor. And give it a little light here and you can see the yellow neon lights and blue neon lights lighting up as well as the monitor and that center console monitor as well. So I've gone and I put some diffusion gel in here for the center monitor and then I've lined the underside of it with tin foil put a piece of diffusion there for the neon portion and using a cool white LED to light up the blue and light up the monitor itself then I'm going to take another piece of tin foil and just kind of push it in here to kind of box it in so it's just a big silver lined light box inside there I've temporarily put the center console in here. I'm going to use that as a guide right now so that I can take the photo etch for the center monitor and glue that into position. And I'm just using that center console just as a guide to line it up and get it properly centered up okay. And then I also put a piece of tin foil underneath here to make more of a light box for that dash monitor. And now you can see everything lit up there. The neon lights, the center dash monitor, and the center console monitor. So now I'm gonna move on and do these wheel enclosures. I've gone and I've glued some tin foil along the inside of each one of them. And then I took some of my diffusion, put it on the center and the other lights there to diffuse the light when I have the LED coming in there. So we've got the clear pieces here. And I'm going to use again my 800 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand these guys down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just sand this away until I get a nice diffuse looking piece of clear plastic like you can see there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue those into position again using the micro scale crystal clear. That way um, it goes on nice and clear. There's no cloudiness from any super glue or any other type of glue. This works pretty well for that because it dries clear and um, you don't see anything holding it. It looks really nice when it's glued in place this way. And then I'm just gonna take the piece and just push it in there and let it sit and dry until that clears up. And I've glued all of them into position on both of the uh, front wheel enclosures and they're both all set up and ready to have lighting installed. So I've glued one 0402 cool white LED in the middle there to light up this middle section right here. And then I've cut out some styrene the shape of the inside of the enclosures and lined them with a piece of tin foil. And then I'm gluing two 0402 SMDs on the inside of these to light up those front strip portions of the uh, enclosure. And then this styrene I will just place right inside here. It fits nice and neat. And I've gone and I've glued both of these in place on both of the enclosures. And then I've also cut a couple little strips out here to do a little bit more light blocking so there's no light leaks. Um, there's a little bit around the edges you can see here. Then I went and I just lined that leak area with some black paint and it covered it up. And you can see I actually have it on right now and you don't see any light leaking. You can see that the lights are on but you don't see anything leaking from the inside. But it looks nice on the outside. Then we have the center headlight here. Uh, this is the back piece which fits right here in the front. And then we have the clear plastic piece that goes over top of it. And this is essentially the headlights for the uh, spinner. So what I've done is I've carved out a little bit of the sides here, um, just a tad, so that I can take my Cobb LED strip 
and I have it cut to one inch and I've shaved it down a little bit and with the uh, cutting I did on the inside of this piece this fits in here perfectly nice and neat it's exactly an inch wide and trimming down the other rest of it it fits in there nice uh, the kit also comes with these two like little fluorescent tubes uh, in the movie that's actually what the light is it's like fluorescent tubes so the model kit comes with these two tubes and they will actually fit inside here along with my Cobb LED strip and then I could put that clear piece on and you can see it all fits inside there so I've drilled out a little hole on the side for the wires for my uh, LED strip and I've run the wires through the hole and I'm gonna go ahead and put this Cobb LED strip into position I've peeled the backing off and I'm gonna stick it down and get it in there permanently and then I'm gonna go ahead and put those little fluorescent tubes in here this is just a test right now yeah a little piece broke off I'll fix that boom here you can see that's what it looks like the LED it lights up very nice and even um, you will notice the the Cobb strip you can see all this writing and the copper contacts for the strip um, I was thinking about painting it white to cover it up but I'm not going to do that now so what I've decided to do is I've cut a piece of diffusion I'm just going to stick some diffusion in here that covers up the copper and the text put the fluorescent tubes in there and it glows nice and white and that's actually much brighter um, to the human eye it looks a little more like this you can actually kind of see the fluorescent tubes it almost looks like the tubes themselves are glowing but anyway that's how it looks when it's in the front of the spinner it looks really nice so now I'm going to do a little more painting uh, I've taped out this area on the top portion of the spinner and this little area on the outside here is supposed to be black so I'm just going to airbrush some black around this outside trim then I'm going to use some of my Tamiya Fine White Primer and paint the inside area white and then when I peel off my tape here you'll see nice white area with the black trim for this little area here I painted it with some Tamiya neutral gray and then I just filled it in with some black in between the uh, gray areas which pretty much matches the way it looks here in the movie then I just need to go through and paint all these wires and stuff on the top. And I've got all those painted up now in these little areas all over the top here. I've also gone and I've done a little bit of German gray wash uh, in some of these recessed line areas just to uh, make them pop and stand out. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint these front portions black. I'm going to use just regular old flat black airbrush it on and I've got those painted up here as you can see and then I'm just gonna go ahead and take my tape off and there we have the signature black stripes of the spinner and yes for you eagle-eyed Blade Runner fans I noticed I painted those stripes black they weren't supposed to be so I repainted on the regular color blue so now I've gone on and I have put a little breadboard in here. Um, I've done the hots and grounds for the center light, the dash light, and the two door lights as well. They're all run to this breadboard here, all powered off of two wires, a hot and a ground. Um, I'm also going to attach this center headlight to this breadboard as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this center light that I just did and rigged with the Cobb LED and I'm going to glue that into position here and then I've gone glued it and wired up the wires to the breadboard and then these are the two wires coming off the breadboard to supply power so now I've got the these are the headrests for the seats these are the little photo etch pieces with the speakers um, I'm going to make them thicker by I'm going to take the photo etch pieces and glue them to the headrests from the kit to make them thicker so they're not so thin 
So I've got the photo etched glued to the kit pieces, but there's a little seam there you can see between the um, photo etch and the kit. So I'm going to use some of my Viejo plastic putty and I'm just going to go ahead and if I can pick up this little teeny piece here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to run a little bead of the putty around the photo etch where it meets with the uh, plastic kit piece. And then what I'll do once that dries is I'll just sand it down and make it smooth so it just looks like it's one full headrest. And here they are now after the putty is dried. I've sanded it down and it's just a solid piece headrest. And the whole thing has been primed with my Tamiya Fine Gray Primer. But I also realized that they were bent the wrong way so I used a heat gun and I bent them back the correct direction so that they wrap around the head for sound from those speakers. And then I've glued them into position and primed the entire seat with my Tamiya Fine Gray Primer. And this is the other photo etch piece that goes behind it in the back. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to spray the seats with Tamiya Neutral Gray, a little bit of a darker gray, and make that the color for the seats and I've got both of those painted with the neutral gray and then I'm just gonna go over them with some of my German gray wash just to get the creases in the seats and the indentations and get some of the detail and make them a little more make them pop a little more stand out there they are with the wash they look a little more worn in and deeper and more cushiony looking and then I'm going to take some Tamiya soot and I'm just gonna rub a little bit here and there around the seat to dirty it up a little bit like somebody's been sitting in it and I'm also going to use a little bit of my um, sand pastel and just give it a little bit of a different color texture there and both of those are done up so they look a little worn been sat in a lot especially with all that wet weather so this photo etch piece here that goes on the back you'll notice on the little ribbed areas around the outside um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some guitar string ribbed guitar string and kind of recreate that by gluing it to the outer edges of this photo etch and I've gone and I've done that um, I don't want it to be neat it looks kind of dirty and then I've gone and I've painted them gray and then done a wash of German gray over them and I've glued those to the back of the seats now and then this is the wall that goes behind the seats inside the spinner so I've glued the seats into position on the inside of the spinner now and they're in there nice and neat So now it's time for me to put the center console into the uh, interior and I'm just going to slide this into position between the two seats and glue it in place. And I've also gone to the back side of the seats and I've painted, I put some crystal clear on there and painted them to make them some different colors but I'm not going to light them, there's really no way to light it. Um, I've run a wire, the wire from the center console. I've also attached that to this breadboard here. And everything is lighting up with just the two wires coming off. You can see everything powering up and lighting up inside the uh, interior of the spinner. At this point, I'm going to do the rear tail lights of the spinner. I put some diffusion gel in the back. I've actually doubled it up. There's two layers of diffusion gel there. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did with the center headlight. I'm going to use my Cobb LED strip and light up those tail lights. Uh, I've cut out some styrene here. Again, glued some tin foil to the underside to make a um, light box essentially out of it. And I've glued three of the sides to the bottom piece along with the cob LED and I just need to attach the top piece like so. And I've got that all done and you can see when I apply power to it the light box lights up. 
So I've gone and glued it into position in the back, um, added a little putty around the inside, and also some black paint for any light blocking. And turn it on, you can see the tail lights came on, but you do not see any light leaking from the interior, at least certainly not enough to where you will see it outside the model. So it's doing its job blocking all the light. And this is how it looks on the exterior when the uh, tail lights are lit. And then I've also gone and applied some chrome silver to the inside of those tail lights. And I think at this point I'm going to go ahead and put the doors on just because I can. They don't really need to go on later. There's no reason to wait. There aren't other pieces that need to go on first. So I've gone and I've gone ahead and glued those into position on both sides of the spinner. And then I've taken some more German Grey wash and done a wash in these vents here, these little lines on the doors here. And also I've done a wash in these vents on the rear behind the doors. I've also painted the back side of the seat with some more neutral gray. Uh, the purpose for this is so that when you're looking at it from the top, you don't see all the colored paints from the little buttons. So you'll notice here in this shot there's this cylindrical tube that's like a dark gray and then it has like a metal rod running down it. Well I've gone and I've painted mine um, with German gray, dark gray. And then I've also taken a piece of wire here and I'm going to strip off the casing of the wire. And then I'm going to take this wire and run it down the exterior of that pole and you can see the wire run down here just like it was in the movie there's that chrome rod. I've also gone and filled this in with some black paint. You can see on the studio model the wires, colored wires and stuff in that black. And then I went through and did some red, gray, and white for these wires. And I also painted this little knob down on the bottom by the door red with a little bit of a silver shaft there. The photo etch also comes with these two cell phones. So you'll see in this shot here, there's a phone sitting there by Harrison Ford. So I've gone and I've shot this with um, some Army Painter Black Primer. And then I just did a little dry brush of some gray over it just to pick up the details and a little bit of silver on the buttons. And then I've gone and glued that into position right back here by his seat just like it was in that shot. And finally I've got the back wall here. I'm going to run some guitar string around the inside of it uh, to look like hoses. In the shots you can see hoses and things behind them. So I've done one guitar string here, bent it to a rough shape of how I want it to fit around there. But I'm going to add several other pieces of guitar string as well to make a bunch of hoses. And I've added more guitar string hoses, a couple greeblies here, painted them gray. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the whole backside with a German gray wash, kind of dirty it all up, darken down the tone a little bit here. And here's how it's starting to look when it's inside, looking down through the windows. And then this is from the front side. You can see the hoses running around here in the middle and on either side of the seats. And here's a little glimpse looking down through the top with the glass and the two light bars, which will also have a bunch of lights on them. And then a shot from the front with the light bars and glass. It conceals the rear, but you can see there's stuff going on. You can see there's hoses and other junk piled back there. So all I have left to do is this part lights up. I want to see if I can figure out how to light that. I'm not sure if I'll be able to or not. And beyond that, it's going to be doing all the police lights along the top. So this is what we've gotten done. Uh, the interior, the seats, the back, a bunch of detail painting on the outside. So I'm going to leave it at that. Again, next time I'll get into pretty much hopefully finishing up all the police lights. It could be a few weeks. I need to figure out how I'm going to do the sketching and coding for that and how I'm going to make it all work. So hang in there and thanks for watching.
Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.